try to stay warm. <laughs> this is me and my dad, Ian. Smile in the wind. My dad's always been a techie science guy. This may be some of the old electronics from the station. Oh, cool. Even a family vacation to northern Manitoba has us geeking out at an old radar station. Let's go in here. OK. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is how horror stories start. Hey, Dad, where'd you go? In here. I found the electronics. Cool. My dad had nothing to do with this station. But I recently found out he had his own part to play in radar history that pitted him against the top scientists at NASA. 1978 was a very busy year for space science. It all started when NASA announced it would launch CSAT, the first satellite to map our planet using radar. But the computer technology needed to transform the radar data into images didn't exist yet. I'm afraid I can't do that. Enter MDA. The scrappy startup enlisted my dad to join a team of other engineers to create the new technology. What were the worrisome factors, like the unknowns? Everything. <laughs> Everything. There's different phases of technological projects. There's the leading edge and the bleeding edge. And we were definitely on the bleeding edge. MDA's job in the project was to take the radar data that received from the satellite and process the data digitally with the computer and produce a focused image of the Earth's surface. We take it for granted now because we have a digital world in the palm of our hands. In the analog world of the 70s, my dad and the guys had a chance to be pioneers in the digital revolution. The promise was with digital computers, you would be able to see parts of the world that we had never seen before. But computers were really in their infancy still. These days, we have 100,000 times more memory in a smartphone. And certainly there were people that sort of questioned whether we, we could do this. I heard that said many, many times back then. Computers will never be able to do this. Adding to the challenge, NASA, the guys who did this, One giant leap for were also racing to build the same technology. Yeah, we were the underdog in that sense. Most companies wouldn't have done it. So why take on such an impossible task? Well, it was basically a voyage of discovery, <laughs> you might say. It just looked like a good roller coaster ride on a really good wooden roller coaster to me. It was an engineer's dream come true. It really was. But with CSAT's launch on the horizon, they'd have little time to turn that dream into reality. It was a huge job. It's like if you're going to build a car. Each of us was creating a sub-assembly for the car. So somebody be the powertrain, somebody be the frame, the suspension. Your dad developed the high-performance engine. My part of the job was basically to work out the computer algorithm. The mathematics he was working with, there were so many variables. Your father was a world-class expert in signal processing. What is signal processing? Well, well <laughs> you're asking a complex, complex question. OK, let's try for something simple. The satellite transmits a radar signal that bounces back containing data. And that gives you information about the Earth's surface. It's sort of like the satellite is a flashlight. Shining a beam onto the Earth. And the Earth is a disco ball. Well. <laughs> and the radar data is the scattered light. Spread out in space and time in such a way that it doesn't look meaningful when you first see it. So my dad designs a computer algorithm. Yes, and mathematically we work out how you have to rearrange the data. Building a virtual lens. In order to focus the data to make an image of the Earth's surface. But instead of using a lens to create the image, they were using a computer. And so that's called signal processing. It's sort of like magic in a way. <laughs> While the team focused on developing their virtual lens, Ignition sequence start. CSAT launch day crept up quickly. T minus 25 seconds. We'd been working on the project for about a year at that time, but uh, we weren't really ready to process data. We had, I would say, two thirds of the algorithm working. They were close but their competitors at NASA were closer. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 
They had the algorithm ready to go. They were well ahead of us. And with CSAT now supplying data, NASA had everything they needed to leave our guys in the dust. The race was on, you know. We had to get that processor going. We kept our chin up and kept on working hard. Round the clock. Until finally, their signal processor was ready for its first test drive. We were a little anxious, for, for sure. The processing speed of the computer we had was less than you'd have in a handheld calculator today. So it took us 40 hours to process seven seconds of data. Just to do a small test. And on November 29th, 1978, they arrived at work, eager to see the results of their trial run. I remember the first morning that we had something that looked like an image. We thought, are we seeing something, or is this just noise? It had these wiggly, bright lines through it. There was nothing else recognizable in this picture. We weren't really sure whether we, we, we'd done the proper job. In their race to beat NASA, they'd run out of road. Or had they? One of the problems with radar imagery is it doesn't show up with crisp lines. And so it took some interpretation. And then when we started to look at it in more detail, someone said, hey, those are streams. We thought, gosh, maybe that's the real image. We had an idea that the scene was in southern Quebec, and uh, we had maps of that area. And we were trying to compare features in the map with that little image. And then finally, it fit. We, we did it. You know, we, we've got the image. It was a pretty euphoric moment, but that was short-lived. In terms of the technological achievement, it was huge. But as a visual, <laughs> it really didn't amount to much. And we knew that in order to impress NASA, we had to get our act together and get a better image. Because there was still a race on. So Ian went away and he tweaked his algorithms and the parameters because the better the signal processing, the sharper the focus. But my dad's beefed up algorithm wouldn't work if their computer couldn't handle the mountain of data. The original image that we did took us 40 hours of continuous processing, but we only processed a small piece of the data. Now we're doing the full meal deal. And of course, the disks kept failing on us. It was a duct tape and bailing wire kind of operation. But gradually, over the course of a week, two weeks, you'd build up a picture. And that's when it got really exciting. We had the whole Trois-Rivières scene. And it was highly focused. This is it, that we've now got a, a real image here. Seeing that image for the first time, the feeling is really indescribable. Everything you'd done to that time was aimed at that very moment. At that point, we could announce to the world that we have digitally processed the first image. But the final judge would be NASA, who sent a contingent to Canada to review their work. We brought them into the lab and they looked at it, and they were just blown away. We took them on and we came out ahead. 38 years later... John! I recognize these guys. <laughs> they reunite. Hey, John. I haven't seen you in a long time. No. <laughs> yeah, good to see you there, nice guys. Nice to see you. Yeah. yeah. So the band's together again. And their achievement still resonates. No one had done it ever before, but we had done it. It changed the technology completely, and it changed everything. My dad and his team revolutionized radar imaging of our planet. The work that we did became a world standard. And helped secure Canada's role in the future of space innovation. <laughs> we had put Canada on the map. Yes. So I have to raise our glasses yeah. and have a toast to CSAT. Yeah. Cheers. 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 <laughs> J-Z. It's not the name of a rock band or? Yeah. Okay. I didn't think you'd know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. 